archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. It's a story that goes back four and a half billion years of evolving mankind and its association with nature of mankind dependent on her on her bounty on her gifts on her feed that her oceans her soil, her streams and forests have fed and devoured at once. In the 21st century, mankind stands at yet another of many tests and turning points its ancestors have been through. Maybe it has forgotten the lessons they learned. It seeks to bend nature to its own will. A series of climatic events shake our belief of Mother Nature as Protector Angel. Ravaged and brutalized, her wrath hits back. This is Kashmir, India's northernmost state. Crowned by generations of rulers and invaders going back centuries as paradise on earth. An integral, though geologically younger part of the great Himalayan range. Kashmir nestles in the northwestern folds of this designated Global Diversity Hotspot Sixty-five percent of this northern Indian state is pure mountainous terrain Before we explore the damage done Let's look closer at how these mountains have nurtured Kashmir and Ladakh and served Indian civilization down thousands of years the mighty Himalayas are the source of some of the mightiest, most revered rivers known to man. Religions and spirituality have emanated from these peaks. Glaciers and snows guide weather patterns and soil fertility well below their teeming heights. Rain, flood or drought, fertility and barrenness and so much more across the vast northern Indian plains have their root causes here. As the mighty Himalayas divide the Gangetic Basin from the Tibetan Plateau, they form a defensive barrier, protecting India from the piercing cold winds of Central Asia. 
The main range of the Himalayas runs along the northeastern flank of the Kashmir Valley. These inhabited regions are at an average height of 1800 meters above sea level. The surrounding Pir Panjal range runs more than 3000 meters high. This, then, is the majestic backdrop to my travels. This is my story of a fading utopia, engineered in its ignorance by mankind itself. <laughs> Ask the nomadic Gujars. Here's a group of tribesmen of the community that I met during my travels across the Zojila Pass. Usually by September, this pass is covered with snow. But things are different this time. Muhammad Musa, now in his 60s, has been passing this way every year since as far back as he can remember. Today, he's the headman of his clan, its oldest member. He reads weather patterns like the proverbial back of his hand. Members of this Dera, as it is called, grow up learning to read the weather, every lull, every wake. By end August, Gujar clans have usually come down from the mountains to warmer temperatures in Jammu. Because weather patterns, Muhammad Musa tells me, have gone awry over the last few years. Summers are warmer and longer, winters delayed, and sudden fierce and heavy rains are constant terror. September 2014, rains fiercer than the region has ever known lashed the valley for days on end. Floods caused havoc. More than 200 people killed. Over half a million stranded. Analysis of causes for this unprecedented disaster point at much more than the stated reasons. They speak of western disturbances hitting monsoon currents, blatant mistruths. This was more a manifestation of an extreme weather event induced by a changing climate. Westerly or easterly wind, dunu milneki vaja se bilkul heavy rainfall most parts of Kashmir and Jammu mein hua tha and sabse jyada jo barish hua tha wo 3 se leke 6 tarik tak hua tha Heavy high intensity rainfall once unknown in these parts is attributed to accelerated melting of snows in the upper reaches of the Himalayas Water volumes in rivers have multiplied many fold and to that Ecological degradation, uncontrolled, grossly unplanned construction, denuding of mountains, encroachment of lakes, and the concoction has turned into a vicious one. The Kashmir Himalayas are home to some 60 of the 327 major glaciers. They contribute 75% of the water in the Indus Basin. Climate change is drastically eating away at these glaciers. 
onset of even marginally higher temperatures and with it a dry heat within the mountains have made the fragile relatively new Himalayan topography prone to landslides. With them come other geological abrasions. Global warming gives such damage a vaster, more dangerous face. As newer disasters take shape, unknown till they take on monstrous proportions. The Pugtal River, flowing through the Zanskar Valley, along the Zanskar range of the Himalayas, tells just such a story. Geographically, it is this range that separates Zanskar from the arid cold desert of Ladakh. In January of 2015, a landslide here in Zanskar subdivision of Kargil created a 200 feet high wall blocking off the river, a naturally created dam. As the blockade stopped the natural flow of water, a lake was formed. The smallest breach in this dam would send millions of litres of water roaring downstream, swallowing all in its path. At risk, lives and properties of 4,000 and more people. <laughs> Villagers Chilling and Nemo in Leh district are the most vulnerable. The nearest roadhead is 43 kilometers away from the blockade. Access is difficult, yet this ground zero has to be reached. Initially, we thought, uh, how do we get there in the first place? Because there are no communications, no uh, systems what to talk of. And uh, with the kind of snowfall, and uh, you know in these uh, heights, a helicopter, it can only carry two jerry cans of fuel or water. So one person or two jerry cans, that is the kind of load. Land surveys near the blockade site led to a tiny open patch of land where emergency operations were based. A hand-picked team of experts monitored developments through the crisis. The emergency is as big as it can get. At an altitude of some 4,000 meters above sea level, the blockade raised by the landslide was huge. 60 meters high, 50 meters wide, running about 600 meters along the river. At minus 35 degrees Celsius, through a harsh landscape, reaching this blockade from the base camp was a stiff challenge too. Here is the job Disaster teams carved out a 1.2 kilometer ropeway from the base camp on one side and the blockade on the other. There was a kind of an alcove where the water had accumulated at the edge or at the base of the landslide dam. And we decided to dig a channel from there down about 100 meters into the downstream. That would be about 2 meters broad because dynamiting more than that would have been also dangerous. So we did that. They used bare hands and very basic tools. The odd controlled explosion. Now unfortunately it was so cold that the water would not flow. So we had to literally wait for a week. By mid-March, the channel has been opened just enough for water to flow through slowly. 
a breach even a few inches too big would send a water torrent downstream spelling disaster. A huge challenge overcome. And yet, for the future, the longer term, where does mitigation and prevention in a scenario like this lie? Can landslides be stopped? Can climate change be held back? Lakes that are form forming under every glacier nowadays with the warming, uh, that's like a water bomb above every village. You know, last year uh, in Gya village, there was a flood. Luckily, nobody died. Many houses were washed away and it was uh, a case of glof, glacial lake outburst. Flash flood, on to the mountains of Zanskar in the western Himalayas. Images that for years have fascinated me deeply. Protruding pinnacles and deep gorges spread over hundreds of miles of landscape. Thousands of years since their formation, these barren peaks have not felt human boots. Virgin, untrampled territory. Along this high-altitude, impassive wilderness, the long, unending gorges and naked mountains on the northern flank of the Zanskar range of the mighty Himalayas lies the Nunkun Glacier. The famed Ladakh Mountains are visible past this behemoth. It was close to summers when we reached the inhabited stretch of villages near the receding baseline of the Parachek Glacier in the Zanskar Valley that releases water into the streams below. Picturesque reflections of mountains in the shallow lakes created by the glaciers speak also of a more disturbing reality staring at these parts. Global warming has its signature here too. Algae on water surface, sure signals of warming. Telltale signs also of the glaciers melting at rates faster than normal. यहाँ पे पहले ये ग्लेशियर बहुत आगे था सर रोड के पास ही था यहाँ से घोड़ा चलने के लिए मुश्किल होता था सर अभी ये ग्लेशियर खत्म होते होते पूरा खत्म हो रहा है सर जितना गर्मी बढ़ते जा रहा है उतना खत्म हो रहा है सर टुडे दिस ग्लेशियर्स मेल्ट टू फास्ट दे रिट्रैक्ट टू रैपिडली राइजिंग टेंपरेचर्स एंड हीटिंग क्लाइमेट पैटर्न्स आर एडेड बाय द गैरिश रॉ ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी वायलेटिंग नेचुरल बिहेवियर We are in village Rangdom. The people here are of Tibetan origin. Unlike most of Zanskar, the population here is almost entirely Buddhist. A feature of every village in the Zanskar Valley is a local monastery often with ancient wall paintings and imagery. This one atop a hill is surrounded by what used to be a lake that dried up years back. Sering Lamo, a local, spends the summer collecting green animal fodder for the winter months. She has lived in Rangdum since she was a child and she knows every day is crucial. Shringma stacks the green fodder on top of wood stalks to protect the wood from dampening. 
What used to be a hectic but easy task gets tougher by the year simply for lack of green fodder. There are many like her in Rangdum, rearing cattle, collecting milk, making cheese and ghee. During summer months, storing green fodder on rooftops is the primary occupation. Till a few years ago, the season used to buzz with activity, capping rooftops with green. But an eerie calm reigns today. The many empty rooftops, extending to locked homes and empty stores below, tell the story of Rangdom. Shortage of fodder had become a perpetual problem Milk production was directly hit. For a rising many, migrating away seemed the only way forward. Those still here stay for the sake of attachment to the land of their birth. Circumstances will push them away too, soon, they say. Vanishing vegetation, rising temperatures, and lack of snowfall, shortage of water that came from the melted snows, and back to plant species dying out. It is a vicious cycle. Here's an animal endemic to this region, now a symbol of a withering stability and dying abundance. The marmot, once a common feature of the landscapes of Ladakh, is now a rare visitor. That whistling hiss, once common to these parts, is now an eagerly awaited delight and speciality. From Rangdum, I travel to adjoining Dras to study the effects of climate change there and its ramifications in this paradise on earth. The Dras Valley at the end of the Zojila Pass. On to Dras on the Srinagar Kargil Highway is the second coldest inhabited place on earth. What is now the buzzing Dras town was just a smattering of houses when I had visited the area last at the onset of the Kargil War. Summers here herald the return of activity and spirit to a town dormant through the extreme winter months. The thick snows have melted their way out. The highway is buzzing again. The seasonal interlude allows for fun activities. Tourism related income swells. Weddings and gaiety bring the town to life. बारिशें ज़्यादा तेज़ बढ़ती हैं आजकल. उसकी वजह से सैलाब का जो असर जैसा होता है, जैसे कश्मीर वैली में हुआ, उसका असर हमारे यहाँ भी हुआ है. और गर्मियाँ ज़्यादा हो रही हैं. Summer 
also has another more realistic face. Saida Bano chops wood for the stores. She knows the stocks have to carry her and her family through harsh winters, a season much longer than summertime. The cold is just a couple of months away and it'll last a long eight months, maybe more. The locals too know these summer festivities won't last too long and that there are practical necessities to be looked at in terms of preparation for the next winter snows. दो तीन सालों से ज्यादातर बारिश भी बरसते हैं ज्यादातर और इसकी वजह से हमें यहाँ सेलाब भी आते हैं सेलाब का बहुत हाथ रहे सर तीन साल हो गया लगातार यहाँ इस नाले से सेलाब चलते हैं और हमारे ये खेती बाड़ी भी पूरे तबाह हो गया था। The melting winter snows also signal heightened agricultural activity, albeit on limited cultivable land in the area. The women take charge, sowing vegetables and buckwheat. The production is poor still. They know the harsh weather and numb soils are not conducive to seed germination. <laughs> and yet, these are but everyday challenges. Once they are happy to live with. हमारे यहाँ दो तीन महीना ही आता है गर्मी तब से बढ़ता नहीं सब्जी को आगे बढ़ने नहीं देते तीन महीने में तो क्या बन जाएगा Alongside down the years and felt much harder now has come the ogre of climate change warming weather patterns and very frequently related phenomena have their ugly say अब तो गर्मी भी आ गई है सर्दी भी आ गई और बारिश भी शुरू हो गई तो बारिश से हमें जब बारिश फट जाते हैं तो यहाँ पर सैलाब काफ़ी होते हैं हर साल हर वक्त जो है सैलाब आने का अंदेशा है द स्कॉचिंग समोसन अन नोन इन दीज पार्ट अ फ्यू ईयर्स बैक इज अ हार्श रियालिटी ड्यूरिंग द समर मंथ ना देन ऑल ऑफ अडन Dark ominous clouds fill the sky and it threatens to rain and rains spell devastation. Flash floods have become an almost annual tragedy. Closely linked to summers come fierce monsoon rains. Water gushes in from higher elevations to the Nala. Settlements are on the edge this year too, fearing a repeat of last year. I met with a direct victim of these changing weather patterns. Floods last year had destroyed Zubeba Begum's small piece of land. She lost a part of her house too. She'd survived that onslaught. God, she says, pulled her out of it somehow. Yet she knows that another such real-life nightmare would bring catastrophe for her and her family. Kangi zindagani ana dia chwa na barabar yung adeng istong na barabar yung ano yade man? Ni lamang cha me chwa cha me chibet. She makes sattu, made from buckwheat. The staple diet of the people of Dras. But produce of this homegrown staple falls short now 
with the changing weather patterns. The people rely increasingly on PDS shops. Life has to go on, an inescapable reality. Even in the shadow of the mood swings of the weather, awakening to this reality is the only choice they have. And summers wilt directly into winter extremes. The snows return, though they stay for a shorter period now. The locals tell me though, that the temperatures are far lower than they once were. So, what is climate change? What net effect has it had on life in this paradise on earth? I came to learn during my travels that more than just seasonal temperatures rising and glaciers melting, Climate change has also been about weather patterns going outright haywire. Seasons compressed, unknown extremes of cold and rain, and warm weather that have wrought uncertainty and massive change in life and economics here. And some mind-boggling changes too. Barely 40 miles from Dras. Kargil in the Suru Valley is reeling under a dry spell and barely any snowfall. Whatever snow they did have has melted, providing moisture to the soil. But 40 miles south of Kargil, the abundant snowfall is surprising farmers. While they are engaged in village archery competition, they are sure to get a bumper crop this season. The women folk sing in praise of God ahead of busy field work. Sayyad Fazlullah, an educated youth of this village, the last that is connected to the world by road, understands the dangers of global warming, the longer term impact. He knows that the inherent uncertainty in the conditions spells doom ahead. The season of the ending May was the ending starting April, first second week April. I travelled to Shilikche, another of several villages around Kargil, about 8,000 feet above sea level. Changing weather patterns is often at the center of discussions here. Agriculture that depends hugely on these factors is the first and worst hit. The sowing season this year has arrived well before usual. Rising temperatures take away soil moisture. In Shilikche, for example, seeds grow faster 
reducing maturing time. Overall yield suffers. I spoke to Muhammad Hussain. For generations, his family has lived off their small farm. But diminishing yields lately mean that they have to think of alternatives. Another factor is the disease striking fruiting plants. Curly leaf disease affecting apples and apricots is a frequent phenomenon. The fruits can't be exported. Warming climate means pests and insects have grown many fold. हमारे एक प्रॉब्लम है उसमें ऑफ पैक बीमारी कहता है बीमारी है उसमें करली मौत नाम का एक बीमारी है तो यहां से हमें श्रीनगर या जम्मू दिल्ली ऐसा जगह में हमें ले जाने के बेने पांव दिए कहता है ये बीमारी जो वहां फैल जाते हैं बाकी खवानी अच्छा होता है बहुत होता है कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है पानी का थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम है पहले की तरह बर्फ नहीं होता है तो ड्राईनेस से थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम हो जाता है द सब्जेक्ट इज वन ऑफ वरिंग इंपॉर्टेंस एट शेर ए कश्मीर एग्रीकल्चरल यूनिवर्सिटी श्रीनगर we might have to have uh, five different kinds of uh, wheat seeds now uh, cultivars one ready for culti uh, sowing in october if that doesn't happen ready for sowing in uh, late november if that doesn't happen ready for sowing in december or last of all it could be in january same thing has in, uh, is happening in summer crops be it maize be it uh, pulses and other things but does climate change and warming temperatures really bode ill for all even if temporarily aren't there sections and regions that stand to benefit are just some of the tribes spread in the region. Worldwide, Aryans are regarded as the master race, tall, blue-eyed blondes of Central Asia, endowed with superior intelligence and values. This young couple, like many other Aryans, have preserved their language and social customs through endogamy and oral traditions, residing in homogeneous culture, surrounded by other ethnic groups. Izidodin on four hamlets nestled along the northern banks of the Indus, atop a hill behind the green patch. Villages Da, Hanu, Darchik and Garkone are home to people considered the last true remnants of the original Aryans in Kashmir. The Brokpas, literally the Highlanders, 
Sonam Vangyal is a leading personality of Gharkone village who is proud of his ancestral culture. Sonam senses the changing weather patterns and what that means for the community. अगर बारिश हो गया तो तूफान आता है पता नहीं कहीं पत्थर गिर जाता है कहीं पानी के सलाब आता है नुकसान करता है पहले ऐसे नहीं था पहले नॉर्मल से आते थे हर हफ्ते हफ्ते में बर्फ गिरता था बारिश गिरता था अभी वो बहुत फर्क पड़ गया जी हिज फैमिली इज बिजी थ्रेशिंग व्हीट द ग्रेन इज हेल्थी एंड द प्रोडक्शन हैज बीन एक्सपेंडेड मेनी फोल्ड Sonam's family now produces two crops in a year. They grow barley, wheat, buckwheat and maize. Never before have the terraced fields of Gharkone yielded so much. There's enough for them to consume and then some to sell to supplement other dietary needs. पहले इतना फसल नहीं होता था सब्जी में भी बदल गया सब्जी भी बहुत डॉन से सब्जी के बीच आया और थोड़ा गर्मी भी चढ़ गया ना अभी इस ज़माने में थोड़ा गर्मी हो गया गर्मी की वजह से हर हर चीज़ यहाँ पर होता है तो मेवा भी आ गया जी वहाँ से डॉन सा गिलास बादाम चारी ऐसे बहुत चीज़ आ गया अभी दिस इज द कोर रीज़न फॉर इट warming climates in the batalic ranges of the himalayas and stronger sunshine means rapid melting of snows and water gushing downhill to irrigate their fields here climate change takes on a positive meaning It extends far beyond grains. Vegetable crops have got a big fillip, especially over the last seven to eight years. From one or two vegetables, the brokpas now grow cauliflower, cabbage, onions, potatoes, and turnips too. It's a thumbs up to fruit production too both in terms of quantity and variety Earlier it was only walnuts and apricots today Gharkone produces grapes and raisins and cherries too With a special mention for tomatoes a manifold increase in production and a success story that has thrilled an entire generation a decade back tomato produce was just enough for consumption at home none even remotely imagined that one day tomatoes would form an economic backbone sent out from these aryan villages to leh kargil and even beyond tomato to charchi to tomato ga ma pa pa kasgo tomato ho yaar butha lo bo piti phala ni rikni be ba tomato on to you know spread the citrus ni tomato to you know the or machine re pretty sure ho sene as you know the tomato nan phusong the mother deity Sring Lamo brought about the revolution in their lives from her boat in the rocky ridges she blesses the villages below for brokpas purity is not only an essence but a tribute to the environment a castless him singing community is experiencing an agricultural bonanza hitherto not known to them the young and the old alike 
wait for the traditional Bonona festival in her honor. Not far from Gharkone, Dr. Muhammad Ali Akhun, an agricultural scientist, is keenly observing the effects of climate change on apricot production in the area. मुश्किल से 20 से 21 गांव 22 गांव थे जहां पर खोबानी बनते खोबानी के वो भी बिल्कुल जो अर्ली वैरायटी बनते थे आज इसने कवर करके 60 पे पहुंच गया है 60 गांव पर पहुंच गया है और 60 गांव में बहुत अच्छा क्रॉप और विद द रिजल्ट ये है कि आज हमारे करगिल की खोबानी के प्रोडक्शन भी पहले आज से 10 साल वो मुश्किल से को 1000 टन था आज 5500 मीट्रिक टन से ऊपर चला गया है आई मूव टू अनदर रीजन ऑफ कश्मीर that has actually turned the adversities of climate change into benefit now and for the longer term if the aryans were naturally benefited by climate change the residents here have actually improvised the situation to their advantage between the white frozen mountains of the himalayas and karakoram ladakh is a cold desert where a fragile ecosystem relies on minimum water resources and traces of snow for centuries melting glaciers and snowfall have been the only water sources ladakh has known and in the absence of any vegetation even this little water flows rapidly down to bigger river systems farming and farmland have been untenable in these parts devoid of moisture the arid and parched fields are unproductive at best climate change rising temperatures actually made it worse But Ladakh has been able to look beyond thanks to a few brilliant minds and they're harnessing the situation to their advantage. Victories against a phenomenon that threatened to undermine life and living. Ladakh today despite water shortages is able to make the most of warming temperatures agriculture once non-existent has reached heights never seen before we are witnessing global warming or more precisely the climate change we are witnessing in this part of the world also accordingly two things are uh, most important uh, to adapt to these changes first is how to harness because it is unchangeable we have to face it so what are the things we can harness from this change and second is uh, how to adapt how to mitigate the things which you don't want or the things which you want to in your side so uh, in the advantage said we see like uh, there are crops which uh, were earlier not adapted to or not suited to this condition now with the efforts of this uh, small institute we are able to grow number of vegetables earlier which were not possible chevang norfo is the man who turned it all around for them he recognized that a warming climate opened up agricultural possibilities if only the water was made available just the right amount at the right time of the year the sowing season and he made it happen here's how ye abhi ye pani bilkul zaya ja raha hai abhi ye naale mein jo pani ja raha hai to maine socha agar ye pan is pani ko in the form of ice mein kahin aap conserve kar sake hain तो स्विंग सीजन में ये कम आ जाएगा 
and the change is there for all to see. So far, Norfolk has built 12 artificial glaciers, which in turn have helped thousands of people, the entire population of this cold desert. Besides being used for irrigation and drinking, the water also recharges groundwater and natural springs. Local economies have been transformed because now farmers have abundant crop yields and are able to sell more of what they grow. बहुत सारी जगहों पे ये ट्रायल करके देखा कि ये सक्सेस होने वाला है। अब मैं चाहता हूँ जितने भी अब हमारे अंगर जनरेशन हैं, वो आगे बढ़के अब ये देखें आगे सोचें इसमें और क्या क्या इम्प्रूवमेंट लग सकता है और इस कैसे कर सकते हैं। On to another innovative success story, one that can overcome damage done by climate change and warming temperatures. 20 kilometers before Leh on National Highway 1D that connects Leh with Srinagar. Another ingenious engineer, Sonam Wangchuk, and his idea are making a Herculean task a reality. Creating the phenomenon of the ice stupa. Sonam's unique water harvesting idea is based on the same simple tenet as that of Norfolk's artificial glaciers. Even at sub-zero temperatures, water flows, yet it freezes when it stands still. The basic principle behind is it is not even high school science. It's just that you put as simple as a pipe which has its inlet dipped into water upslope and then you bring it down, whatever the slope brings you down and however high, tall you want, 30 meters, 60 meters, and then the pipe rises up straight wh where you want to make it. So it could be 30 meters, in this case it is 20 meters. Uh, and then you put a sprinkler or a fountain, and through the fountain the water gushes out at pressure, and as it falls down, it uh, is cooled by the minus 20 winds, and it falls down and freezes immediately and that's how a ice cone uh, takes shape and ice cone is has that beauty of very little surface area for the given volume of water and that's why the sun is unable to melt it even if it is at low altitude in full sunshine not even behind a mountain so the scarcity period will be taken care of by the melting artificial ice cone or glacier and then the real glaciers start giving off water. So the farmer or the uh, vegetation that you plant will be taken care of without a gap in between. The ice melts at the peak of the summer season, answering the water needs at that time. Eighty to 100 such stupas dotting the region with the potential to completely transform barren land will provide millions of cubic liters of water changing ecosystems and the topography changing the lives of the people forever Sonam Zai Stupa has a backdrop in support from religious leaders of the area most notably the powerful Skyab Gon Rinpoche. I think this is here one small project, but important is that now as global warming is this the world never had in the human history this you know challenges. So this we remind everybody to think we have to collect the water, save the water to benefit uh, all central beings. That is main our purpose. And. In the ice stupa, religious leanings thrown up by the spectre of climate change also come to the fore, making it as much a religious icon as a progressive one, telling the story of a resilient standing up 
to the curse of climate change. Global warming, the fading snows, the ravaging rains, the receding glaciers, the soaring temperatures carries with it strong warning signals from nature reacting to injury and abuse. Maybe the key, the remedy lies in education, in awareness and awakening to the cycle of damage that threatens a way of life. As someone once put it, one way or the other, your activities will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. Are you?